How does it come that something transparent can be green but not white? Hmm. Let's find an answer by playing puppet theater with color actors. Here comes the first actor. A blue card. In the sharp light from a distant lamp, it casts a black shadow on the white wall. A second blue actor enters the scene. Like the first one, it casts a distinct shadow, but this shadow is blue. The actor consists of a transparent material. It has a dual role, both in casting a shadow and in lighting it up. Now the scene changes. The wall behind becomes totally black. You still see the first actor, but the transparent one becomes invisible. The colors it contributed disappear. Next, the first actor is exchanged with the white one. As concerns the blue actor, observe that where you regard its shadow through it, there appears a deeper blue color. We push the two actors closely together and a sculpture of remarkable complexity results. One can distinguish seven areas of different color, plus the white background. Again, with black background, only two areas remain visible, namely the white actor, as partly seen through the transparent one. From this we learn that a colored transparent medium on top of a white ground may look as a surface color. The white ground is both illuminated and seen through the transparent layer. Hence, the resulting surface color is deeper than the color of the transparent layer itself. In diffuse lighting, there are no shadows and from a distance you cannot distinguish transparent samples from opaque ones. Make a guess here. Now I change to black background and the two cards with surface colors stand out. A transparent actor needs something light behind in order to be visible. Look here. Four actors are standing in against black background. A transparent one passes by in front of them. Its color fuses with that of the one behind. Against the yellow one, green. Against orange, brown. Against the magenta one, violet, and against the white one. Light blue. Suppose I should ask, what is the color of the actor itself? The answer would be light blue. The way it looks against white. The white surface is passive. It doesn't itself contribute to the mixture, but displays the actor's own color. Against the multicolored background, transparency and depth are readily perceived. We look through the blue sheet on a part of the scenery behind and holding the sheet closer to the eye, we rather see the whole scenery as in bluish light. Goethe in his Farbenlehre describes how the mood of a scenery changes when you look at a landscape through colored glasses. 
instead of being seen as an object among others, the transparent plate now contributes by modulating the illumination of the scene. However, to come to grips with the issue, why is it that a transparent medium may have any color except white? Let us once more compare transparent media and opaque surface colors. All color materials, transparent as well as opaque ones, have one thing in common. They bring with them an element of darkness. A transparent plate must not necessarily be green, blue or orange. It may also be simply grey. Our question, why it cannot be white, accordingly doesn't concern the attribute U. Look what happens when the contribution of darkness is diminished. The grayscale ends up with pure white and the transparent one with clear transparency, no darkening of what is seen through it. So, in the world of transparent colors, this is what corresponds to white in the world of surface colors. Together, against white background, they are seductively similar. What they have in common is that both represent the world before color, that is to say, before darkness became active. It would be logical to call a clear glass plate white, as when we speak of white light, meaning colorless light. However, Wittgenstein pointed out that the very concept of transparency presupposes three-dimensional space. There must be something behind that can be seen through the transparent medium. We started our investigation with two blue actors on the scene. Here we see two colorless actors in the same scene. We now see that the two actors are radically different, after all. Transparency and whiteness. From the point of view of color systematics, they may be closely related, but at the same time, we are dealing with extremes. This is the paradox Wittgenstein wanted to draw our attention to. There is no compromise in the choice between transparency and whiteness. Look at this half-transparent plate. What color does it have? You may call it white or whitish, if necessary to give it a color name. To get really white, it must grow denser until it reaches full opacity. On the other hand, to be acceptable as purely transparent, it must become completely clear without any hint of whiteness. When we are pondering the unique property of white, it is no longer as a color among others not as a material that can be bought in a paint shop. No, it is the whiteness itself we are trying to grasp. The white surface has an important role to play in connection with light, space and vision. Let me give you a hint about this. To begin with, the difference in appearance between the transparent and the surface color might be described as a difference in attitude. Look here. The surface color manifests itself as autonomous 
independent, dominant. The transparent one is heteronomous. It relates to the situation, is drawn into the community of colors present and mixes with them until no longer recognizable. It may even show us the whole scenery in colored illumination. A surface color, as the one to the right, manifests itself by stopping the gaze. You cannot see what is behind and it doesn't matter. Now, compare with a white surface. It also stops the gaze, but not as provocatively. It is as if it wanted to be transparent for our gaze, showing us something else than itself. The white surface is tabula rasa. It invites something, whatever, to be displayed on it. A shadow projection, a drawing, a painting. Both the white and the transparent material are essentially at light's disposal. We humans are inclined to stay on our side of the white wall and take pleasure in the world of pictures and artifacts we are capable of producing ourselves. A room with white walls creates a soft presence of light suitable for complicated visual tasks. In short, we feel at home in the comfortable world whiteness can give shelter to. The transparent window of glass, which lets in the light we need, is also something through which we can look out into the world on the other side of the wall, letting the gaze travel all the way to the horizon and ultimately, like Galilei with his telescope, to the dark space of universe with its enigmatic glimmering configurations.